All right. So good evening. Um, please, if you're watching from Facebook, uh, let me know if the live stream is still up. I got a notification. I don't know if that's that's gonna be a problem with that. Anyway. So it's been a while I, I did something like this. I I have been quite occupied with a couple of other things and I just thought I'll take this time to to catch up with everyone and maybe have a discussion. Have a couple of um questions and then see how best I can answer them. So maybe we can we can start taking questions for the next 10 minutes. And then as we move on, we'll see how how best the, the dynamics of the whole dialogue will go. So thank you guys for for being here and we can begin. I think I'll try and sort the Facebook link up as we move on. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, guys.
Okay, so Dennis, you're asking how is life on campus? Uh, I wouldn't even call this life on campus. How is life in my room? So as as most of you would be aware, the pandemic is still very active in this part of the world, and we've been in um, lockdown for a couple of days now. So we never even had a chance to celebrate Christmas outdoors. I mean, since September, life has been more online than in person. So we do most of um, our coursework and other stuff online. So yeah, that is life on campus. Uh, total lockdown or partial. Um, the way the system is structured here, it's a total lockdown, but essential shops are still opened and they are trusting you enough to, to just keep your distance. If you need something, you step out and get it and then get back inside. So yeah, it's more of total and somehow it's partial. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, you're welcome. <laughs> So we're just taking questions. If, you, if you're just joining us, we're taking questions. If you have any question at all, just pop it in the chat. I would see it and um, I'll give answers that I can. And then we, we see how it goes. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, I think if there are no questions right now, I can I can just go on and talk about um, 2020, how, how it was for me and my experiences, the highs, the lows, and what I think the way forward will be. Mr. Kudoto, you're welcome. Um, so, 2020 was, um, or is, or has been um, incredible. I think that's the best word to describe it. It's been incredible because there were ups and there were lows. There were a lot of unexpected um, variables in there. So, it's been incredible. We all started the year with high hopes and dreams, things we wanted to do. And in the first quarter, before the first quarter ended, we, we had to, you know, rethink and adjust our goals and dreams. So it, it was incredible. Um, a lot of beautiful things did happen in 2020 as much as uh, some horrible things also. So I think the year was incredible. What would I make of the year in general? Well, I think as I said, it's been incredible. We've made some gains and um, as usual of any other year, we, we, we made some losses as well. I think that the the hallmark of the year, as we, we, we've all, I think we will we'll all know or have experienced, would be the pandemic. We never expected this, and then it's it took all of us by surprise. Nobody was prepared for it. Um, as, as a health worker working in the emergency services at um, my hospital, uh, 
it meant extra extra workload and extra vigilance. I mean, if you you know how our health system is structured in Ghana, uh, there are standards and we improvise a lot, right? So having a pandemic like this sort of pushed all of us to our limits to try to protect ourselves and the people we are caring for. So it took it took a lot of heavy toll on all of us. I mean physically, psychologically and all of that. So I think that's that's how I uh, I would describe the year in general. So with regards to the pandemic and the way lives have been affected in different areas, what advice would you give for the years ahead? Uh, I think there's a lot. There's a lot we'll say about the 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 way forward today. I think that the 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 pandemic has actually um, opened up new new doors and a new reality in in all of our lives. A lot of things we never thought we could do or we are capable of doing, we've been able to to re-strategize and then we are doing quite a lot of them. Hello, Edmond, you're welcome. Um, going forward, I think I think we... Right from March when uh, the first few cases were seen in Ghana, most of us have gone through the process of readjusting. Everybody didn't get it right, but I think every day is a learning process and we are still working on that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Mr. Kudete, so what's my what's the favorite dish I have prepared in 2020? This is a, this is I can't pick a favorite. So okay, so when when uh, COVID came, one of the things I I rediscovered or I started doing was uh, to put more time into uh, fish farming or yeah, working with a fish farm. So before before COVID, I had busy schedules in the hospital and with family and all of that, I I didn't really have time to do other things. I was more of running between the hospital, Clayth, and a, a lot of all those stuff. When COVID started, truly workload in the hospital, although we 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 had to push ourselves to the wall. Workload had reduced a little bit. So some departments were overwhelmed while others because of the limitation in the cases we see, workload had reduced a bit. So I found a way of uh, spending half of my day uh, at Flossal Farms in Sogapopehu deal uh, in tilapia and some catfish for research purposes and tilapia for commercial purposes so i i got to learn about fish and all that and i cooked a lot of fish and mr kudoto as you would know already tilapia is one of my favorite meals and i enjoy cooking it so yeah that should answer <laughs> One of my favorite dishes in 2020. Yeah. How do we manage our health indoors and on the internet? Uh, okay, so health wise, a lot of uh, the pressure we have on ourselves would be psychological. Uh, I think for now in Ghana, much of much has returned to normal, I should say. Hospitals are running full time now. They are seeing all cases. Uh, so I think with physical health, if you still have a problem, you can access health from any facility closer to you. Uh, psychologically, 
and as you brought the internet into it, um, I have observed keenly the dynamics of uh, dialogues that go on on the internet lately. It looks like there are people who are just online waiting for whatever you put there to either criticize or to throw some jabs at you. People have, I don't know whether they have now, um, <laughs> what would I say? Whether they have been certified in this or they're just ready to do that. Regardless of how positive or whatever you put out there, somebody would definitely come and say something that is really unfavorable or undesirable. And if you're somebody like me, I take those things uh, a little personal. Like, you feel, why is somebody thinking this way? You know? So life on the internet has has become, or maybe it has always been this crazy, but I think with all the time on our hand, people have, you know, become this way. But that's just a negative side. There's been a lot of positives also. Uh, this pandemic has actually given light to a lot of TikTok. People have a lot of positive videos out there, dance videos, educative videos, food blogging and all that. It has become more enhanced. So there are lots you can find on, inter on the internet that can improve your psychological health, your physical health, as much as there's a lot you can find that will be draining. My advice is that we try to stay our way or out of the negative space more. And the thing is, whatever somebody says about you or to you on the internet doesn't really matter. You have to know your self-worth and you have to know what you are made of. That way, I mean, the water outside cannot drown you. So those comments or whatever will come but we can leave above them yeah uh please what do you know about the new strain of the virus in england um not much so it's it's been uh, announced that there's a new strain that is even more dangerous than the previous one I mean, the mutation is, is as dangerous or more dangerous than the previous one, and which it could only mean that um, all the gains that were made uh, with COVID-19 or COVID-19, um, more needs to be done. All right, the vaccine that is it's been brought out. There are still questions in in the public domain as to the new strain that has come. Would it be effective for it? Honestly, this are answers I don't have because that vaccine was definitely designed for the strain that was available. And I believe that the basis of the COVID-19 is what a vaccine will try to target. So it may still be as effective as they need it to be. Yes. For now, that's there's scanty information on the, the veracity of the new strain. So I can just say we would all keep reading more and researching to see how uh, that's going to be. On Facebook, let's also be mindful of addiction to the internet. Yeah, thank you, Awal. We definitely need to be mindful of addiction to the internet. There is still so much we can do in person or in the physical space. Some people use the internet positively, and it's not bad. But I know how most of us are addicted to being on WhatsApp, being on Facebook, and other spaces when we are not really doing anything positive. We are just looking out for what has somebody posted today? What is somebody wearing today? How long is this lady's bone straight or whatever? 
all of that doesn't add much to to us. So addiction to the internet is one thing we need to be mindful of. Thank you, Awal. Um, hey, Adam, welcome. Um, Dennis, will you say that the internet lately has done a lot of harm alongside the good things here? It has helped us achieve during the pandemic. Definitely. In other jurisdictions, uh, bullying on the internet is taken very seriously. So you, whatever you write online can come back to bite you. If you if you say something uncomfortable to somebody on the internet, you, it can be used against you, maybe in the court of law or something. But our system, although we we morally frown upon all these things, when we go online, we still do them anyway, which is wrong. Yeah, so the internet somehow has done a lot of harm to people. It has affected people's mental health. Something you would say online that you think you're just making fun or creating something uh, or a funny environment can go to affect somebody's health. Yeah, we've seen that. Yeah, so... Hey, Barbara, you're welcome. Mr. Acosta, you're welcome. So if you've just joined us, we, we, we're we just trying to interact if you put a question in uh, your chat box or under the video, I would look at it and see if I have answers to it, and I'll give you answers to the best of my knowledge. It's been a long year filled with a lot of ups and downs, and we're just trying to, to, to dialogue as we prepare to cross over into a new year. I'm glad having all of you on friends and family. Hey, Amma, I can see you. Ralph, you're welcome. Thank you guys for joining. Yeah, so as I was saying, one one of one of the the major highlights for me in 2020 has been um should I even call it this? No. Has been my son. So I I I had a son this year who should be I think eight months old next month. And the, amidst the pandemic and all of that, it's been one of the the most beautiful things that has happened to me this year. Uh, the pandemic started somewhere in March, right? Yeah, so we were juggling all of this and then the whole mental confusion of is this the best time? And this is not something you can reverse. This is the best time of having somebody new into the world, somebody who may not have an effective immune system yet into a pandemic. So it, it was it was so dicey. But honestly, it's been one of the most beautiful things that has happened to me in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Please, what drink is in the glass? It's just red wine. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big boy now. He's breaking cowboys. Really? I would have to cross-check that. If you're free sometime, you could organize a webinar on safe usage of, on the internet. Get resource persons on board and let's kick in. Okay. I'll, I'll put that topic down. I'm hoping that we would be able to, to run this more going forward in 2021 uh, there is there is i have something coming up i have something coming up i wish it was ready by today so we could actually break eyes on but it's not fully ready so hopefully by by next month we we, we should 
get some news on that. There's something beautiful coming up, so we would be able to fix all of this into it. Um. Yo, Morris, thank you so much. I miss you. Thank you, bro. So yeah, we've. If you have any questions at all, anything, we still have a lot of time. I think we'll do this till uh, 9 p.m. So we'll, we'll spend an hour. We've spent 25 minutes already. Any question at all, just pop it in and I'll see how best to answer. Uh, that is what do you have coming up? Just me via... <laughs> well... Don't worry, just, just, it's going to come soon. Don't worry. In a few, few, few days or weeks, it should, it should come on and you'd know about it. It's something positive. It's something for, for all of us, something for the community. Yeah. Something we would all be involved in to to maybe make our environment or our community better <laughs> what are my views on the vaccine <laughs> so as a health professional and uh, somebody who believes in science I've seen the the work of vaccines. I've seen uh, you know positive interventions that vaccines have brought into into this life and our communities. If we take the polio vaccine, for example, uh, it, it was developed after so many uh, res years of research and trials and today it's been one of the best things that has happened to the the health community we can talk of other vaccines even hepatitis and all of that that we still take vaccines are designed or they are produced to to save lives or to to prevent uh, one illness or the other I don't think any any organization or any company would would want to produce um, a drug or any vaccine that would affect um, our lives or end our lives intentionally. They would they would not do that. We can rule out the fact that there are still negative people in this world and there are still people who, who, who you know, push the hate agenda. We can rule that out. But I don't have any, any negative feelings towards the vaccine. I think uh, although the timing, uh, the time for having made this vaccine is, is too soon, because from history, we know how long it takes to design, perfect trial and all of that for a vaccine to be available to the, the public. But as we, we are already aware, we are not in normal times and we need, we need the speed. So I won't say I have any negative feelings towards it. If I need to take it, I will. Yeah, so I have nothing against the vaccine. <laughs> um okay so there's no question down here i wouldn't mind bringing anyone on camera so if you if you want to come on camera just let me know you can type it in the chat box and i'll bring you in we'll have a conversation yeah, so maybe another high, high, high of 2020 has been 
So the mRNA sequence, how does it work? Uh, I think that is technical. That is technical. I can't have... Uh, I, I don't think I have... Um, an authoritative an answer on that. But basically, the... the the way virus or uh, a virus would work on their own, they they are not really living organisms. They need to to be attached to a host. So they, they are parasitic sort of. They need to be attached to a host to to get live and then be able to replicate and affect people. Uh, the the little I've known about virus or viral infections is that they are difficult to treat the body itself is able to to find a way to attack them and overcome it with um an effective or a robust immune system the reason that hiv still persists or is still living um in the human population I believe or I know from from knowledge is that the virus is able to to move across the blood brain barrier which makes it difficult for any of the drugs or uh, concoctions that have been prepared or perfected for that particular infection to attack them. Because once they move across, the drugs don't necessarily have that ability to cross that barrier. So it makes that difficult to handle. They just, the, the virus just wait as soon as they, they suspect that, okay, whatever drug you are trying to use to fight as it's not in the system, they come back. And if you, you let yourself down, they will come back and they will break your system down. That is why we always advise that that if you are an HIV patient or somebody with the virus in you, you keep taking the medication. Once you're taking the medication, you'd be healthy, you'd live just like any other normal person. So for now, that is what I know about viral infections on, or virus. They could come back if the immune system is depleted or, or it becomes weak. So drugs per se attacking virus or killing them, I I I still probably need to get more information on that. I don't know if there is anything like that. So preventing the virus from um, infecting a host will be the the angle that we always try to go. Yeah. Do you think the virus has made us more antisocial? Uh, antisocial, maybe. I don't think it's the virus that has made us antisocial. It is what we we had to do to to keep up or to keep safe from the virus. Most of us are not really doing well. I am not doing well. I should say. I'm I'm a very shy person, I, I would say first. And then again, I'm a social person. I love being around friends and family. And with what we have to do to adjust, it just means that now we are staying away from people. We have to social distance. We stay indoor more. I mean, from where I am speaking from, that is the, the norm. So... The joy some of us derive from spending time around warm people or interacting with more warm people is not there. So I won't say it has made me antisocial or it has made us antisocial, but it has actually uh, affected our, you know, psychological makeup. Most of us, if we don't take time, may end up being depressed, you know, which is a downside to this way of trying to manage the pandemic but beautifully most jurisdictions or most uh, working systems have uh, you know 
other things in place that can handle this. I mean, some call centers are av available. Uh, there are socially distanced events or programs that are online that you can access. So people are trying to be innovative. As I said, the, the virus or the pandemic has given us, it has opened another part of our brain that you can do this, we can do this. So there's a high and then there is a low of it, yeah. Uh, Elikem, welcome. Jokas, welcome. Uh, Pearl, Delali, thank you guys for joining. Uh, Facebook, we need more questions from you guys. Um, there's another question here. How do you think we can get our lives back to normal? I think for now, for now, if we are being realistic, life is not coming back to normal for now. Life is not coming back to normal. I mean, we all hoped that by the time 2020 was coming to an end, this whole pandemic would have, you know, dwindled down. And now we are finding out there's a new strain and we don't know how much a tool that would take on us as we have already experienced, you know? So I think if we should be realistic, let's brace ourselves for, for another tag of war, at least for the first half of 2021. Um, at least in, in this other jurisdictions where the virus is still making a lot of um, harmful impact. In Ghana, from what I've seen so far, I don't think we are really taking the the pandemic very seriously. And I can't blame us. We 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 haven't really seen the the harmful effects of it on our society that much. So it's given us hope that oh we can really overcome this. And I think it's 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 a positive way to look at things. Somehow most of us have probably even come in contact with the virus and have developed resistance, whatever. I'm not saying that is a proven theory, but it's possible. Because with the way we interact, there's still no social distance. Even as it said in the public domain, people still, you know, form groups and go out, have fun and all of that. It is very likely. We can't say the virus is not moving in, 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 uh, in Ghana. It is. So it's, probably, it's very likely people have come in contact with it, developed resistance. It's very likely that uh, we are just somehow, we just have some... I don't know. I can't say we have immunity, but we just have some resistance towards it, I think. But again, as this new strain of the virus has come, it's still new beginnings, so or it's still too early to say we are resistant to it or we are not. So I think we, we should still be careful. We should, we should still take the precautions seriously, washing of hands, sanitizing, Wearing our face masks in public is still very important. Limiting people we interact with, being socially distanced and all that. We should still take all of those precautions seriously. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, if I have to bring you in, then you have to join through Facebook. I'm not so um, savvy with the YouTube stream yet, so... If I have to bring you in, it would have to be through Facebook. Yeah. Um, so somebody says, uh, or Dennis is saying he thinks it's our new way of life that's making us sort of antisocial. I I personally believe that there there is a lot in us that situations bring out. Could it be that people don't really like people? Could it be that some people don't really even like us or they don't really love being around us? And now the opportunity has come that, oh, 
I don't want to be around people. Yeah, it's it's more of, it's a safety mechanism, but what is not in us can not really be brought out, right? Yeah, so it could be. Can you get coronavirus through sex? So far, uh, that has not been established. You can get a lot of other diseases through sex anyway. You can get a lot of other viral infections through sex. But so far, COVID hasn't been established to, to be transmitted through sex. It's, it's for now, through um, the nostrils or the mouth, the buccal cavity, I think, for now, that's, that's the established um, pathway of COVID. The eyes also, but so far, the, the, the eye uh, entrance hasn't really been uh, as, as uh, troublesome or... Yeah, as the other the other sides, the nostrils and then the the mouth. Um, okay. Sammy, you're welcome. Dora, you're welcome also. Yeah, okay, so no questions on the ground. So I'll just continue with um the other we have more of 19 minutes more to stay live so just continue with the other highs um i think the other the other high of uh, 2020 for me um has been the opportunity um i availed or the opportunity given to me by um the british government through the prestigious children's uh, scholarship scheme to be here for a year to gain a, a master's degree in uh, my chosen field i think it's been the second and ultimate high of my 2020 all the preparations for this did not start in 2020 I can remember, for me, it started as far back as 2017, but the main process started for me in 2019. Through so many phases, and then 2020 brought this good news, and I'm here. Although there's so much I miss, or my friends would say we miss from Ghana and the way we live and interact. There is also so many opportunities that this this has given us so many new things to learn, uh, so many new things to see, so many new people to potentially meet and interact with and gain some, you know, inspiration, knowledge and network with. It's definitely going to be one of the highs i would or the ultimate high i'll count from my 2020. i i can't really describe this feeling it's amazing it's amazing it's amazing and there's no way i can really talk about my 2020 without uh, mentioning this so that's also one of the main highs i've, I've had
someone is saying if there are any other study opportunities link us up yeah um so there is this page i should connect everybody if you if you are online right now if you are watching this there is uh, this lady i call scholarship santa uh she's miss lois i think she has her page is uh oh nice nice shout to caveman watches uh yes i'll talk about caveman also before this call ends yo bro how's it how's the state Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoa. Insane. Yeah. lockdown I, I i can say the same because all the plans i had for christmas had to be locked down i i couldn't move from my city to the other cities because because of the new train that has been detected they had to shut down everything yeah it is it is i'm in swansea i'm in wales I'm in Wales, in Swansea. Yeah. Um, maybe till uh, December next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. 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 We should. Uh. <laughs> I think uh, with me, it COVID took away my my freedom and the ability to meet new people and interact. I love to be out there. I don't like staying indoors, and it has just you know destabilized my my routines, my plans, and the the the, the stressful aspect is that. Now you have to study. You have to study a whole master's program online, and the teaching block and all of that is difficult. And you'd have to just adjust, do more work yourself, and it's difficult. It's difficult. So the pandemic has really, really taken a toll on all of us. I, I should say. There's no time. There's no time. Damn. 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 
as learning to people that are parents that still are still to kill you. Exactly. Exactly. Not at all. There's so much conspiracy. We can only hope for the best, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cheers. Sure. Thanks, man. Ah, we did our best. We just had to ad ad adjust and adapt, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Hi, bro. It's been amazing having you on. Thanks so much. Thanks, bro. Yeah, nice talking to you too. We'll link up, bro. Hi. Okay. Okay, guys. So um, we should be going off in the next four minutes. And uh, my way forward in 2021 should be we, we we need to take care of ourselves as uh, my brother Maurice has just said through Facebook the virus is more more damaging to anybody with a weaker immune system and that's what HIV AIDS did which was a viral infection people with a weaker immune system have the AIDS you know so it kills them. The virus itself will not kill you, but it makes it, it brings in other opportunistic diseases. 
COVID is more dangerous because the time that HIV would take, COVID would take a shorter time. You might have a, a, a stronger immune system and then maybe come in contact with COVID. You may not be affected, but you might end up infecting somebody else. Our parents, our grandparents and all that who are old and may not have that strong immune system anymore. And we need to be careful. Let's just wear the mask as much as possible in public places. It's important. Life, as we know, it is in our hands. We can't depend on the government or whoever to, to take care of us or to protect us. We have to really take the precautions seriously, right? Going forward in 2021, I know and I believe so much that we are going to be safe and would do bigger things. We would adjust and adapt properly and do more big things, right? But we need to actually want it and go for it. That's what I would say. We need to go for it. You know, we have to decide that we want good health and go for it. That's what I think we should do. Um, yeah, I hope we'll be doing more of this. We'll be doing more of this. Thank you guys so much. Big, big shouts to all friends and family and everybody who joined. Um, a tip on what I said would be coming. So uh, we're trying to put something together that would... Uh, throw light and uh, give some attention to businesses in our space and people who are doing other good things for society. And we're trying to match some charity and business together. So I'll bring you a lot of gist on that. Shout to Caveman Watches for always keeping it 100, holding it down, putting Ghana on the map by, you know, designing this authentic and high quality watches that are really making waves across the whole world. Thank you so much, Caveman, and thank you for all the trust and belief in me as a person and your friend. Thank you to Nesset Awal. Thank you. You've been amazing. You've been an amazing friend to me, and thank you all. Mr. Kudoto, Adam, Lily, Dennis, um, Barbara, Ralph, Maurice, and every other person who joined today's uh, call or today's live session. I appreciate this and I hope to really keep up with this and then we make some positive impact in our society. Thank you so much and until next time, Please keep safe and have a wonderful new year. Bye-bye. Oh, wow, this song is dedicated to you. Yeah, I know how much you love Stoneboy, how much we love Stoneboy. So, yeah, thanks so much, guys. Thank you.